we're often asked the question, how come when I run a test, I don't see its results on the results tab? This is normally due to the fact that when you run the test on the test tab, you're running it in quick execution mode. Quick execution mode does give you results and log files that you can view and act upon, but these are temporary results. Anytime you rerun or re-execute a test in quick execution or hit clear results, those results will be lost. In order to get permanent results in Test Studio, you need to have your test in a test list and run it from the test list tab. Once that's completed, it will return results to your Test Studio environment. As you can see, the results tab gives me a high-level pass-fail coloration or those that have been scheduled for the future. And we can drill into a particular test list. Here we can see that this particular test passed on IE and failed on Firefox. If we double click into the test run for Firefox, we'll see the steps that passed, the steps that were skipped, and the step that ultimately failed. By double clicking the red X, I can view the failure details for this failed step. Here we can see that it was unable to locate an element. In this case, it was looking for that element based off a tag name combined with the text content. So backup search methods kicked in and it was able to locate something for us with XPath. Now typically XPath is not the solution to the problem, but it can provide some suggestions. And those suggestions will be presented for you on the Resolve Failure tab. And here on the Resolve Failure tab, we can see what XPath brought back for us, which was essentially the attributes of the login button. So in this case, it didn't necessarily give us the right information to fix the issue. We're still looking for the log out button and it found the login button. But we can tell how XPath works. It goes to a position on the screen and tries to find things. If we look at the images, we can see the expected state shows us where logout was supposed to be located. And at the point of failure, we see that it wasn't actually logged in and that instead it was the login button. That's why I provided suggestions for the login button. Nice try, XPath. Better luck next time. We also have the report view that gives us the breakdown of tests that passed and tests that failed, since we only have two tests in this list, and one passed and one failed, and that's the 50-50 split. And on the report, you can also add comments. If there's a trend you want to keep track of or something that you've seen before, uh, you could certainly add those comments for yourself to see in the future or for others to see as well. In this case, we'll make sure that the browser is recalibrated before the test is run. And we could take those test list execution results and export them in many different formats. HTML, XML, Word, Excel, Visual Studio TRX result file. You can even push those directly out through an email format as well. As you make your selection here, it will spin up the email tool. And since I chose the HTML attachment there, it's automatically attached that. I can simply pass this along to other team members with this failure information. And here we can see the actual details of the steps that passed, the step that failed here, and the failure information, including the expected state and the actual state. Nicely displayed in an email notification HTML attachment there. And of course, you have your other formats that you can work with from the emailer, as well as from the exporter if you just wanted to export those to a local file system. In addition, you do have your publishing options to publish to the server. This would be the Test Studio scheduling server if you have some local results that you might want to push to the server itself.